All right, in 8.5, we're going to kind of review all the factoring forms I've shown you, and then we're using them in area problems. So here's a little chart for you. It's all based on GCF, right? We find greatest common factor in all the different ways. The first one I showed you was differences of squares, when you have two squared terms with a minus sign in between. There's only two terms to it, and it's really simple. Then if it was three terms, we did the multiply add chart, we found the factors that multiplied to the value and added to the middle value, and we split those to find uh, the middle. Now, what about if it was four terms? Remember it was four terms, we just grouped them, and we did the greatest common factor twice. So this is all just review for you. So I want to um, do a couple review questions with you and then show you a little trick. It's kind of a shortcut. So um, let me show you. Number one, let's do this. 3x squared plus 17x plus 10. All right, so it's three terms. So I'm going to do that multiply add chart. So I want to multiply to, let's see, multiply to 30. But I want to add to 17. Okay, hopefully what comes to mind is a 2 and a 15. It's going to be positive. When we add, we get positive. So these two work really nicely. So when I split this up, I'm going to bring that 3x squared down. I'm going to split that 17 up by doing 2x plus 15x and then just bring that 10 down. All right, so I'm going to pair these up. What's the GCF here? Well, it's just x. So then I have 3x plus 2. Bring that plus sign straight down. And what's the GCF here? Well, those two have a 5 in common, so it's going to be x, oh no, I'm sorry, it's 3x plus, so 15 divided by 5 is 3, 10 divided by 5 is 2, so there's my GCF. So it's 3x plus 2 times x plus 5. All right, that's review, right? Just review. Now, what? let's try the next one. This one is x squared plus 9x. Plus 20. All right, let's do our multiply add chart. We're going to multiply to 20. We're going to add to 9. What two numbers multiply to 20 and add to 9? Uh, hopefully, 4 and 5 come to mind for you. When I break it up, that 9, I'm going to get a 4x plus 5x plus 20. And I separate them out. So if I, I take an x out of both of these, I have x plus 4. I take out these two, I bring that plus sign down. I take out a 5, and I have x plus 4. So this one is just going to be x plus 4 times x plus 5. Now, I want you to stop and notice the pattern here. I want you to see something. It will save you some time and grief later if you see it now. So, well, look at this. I want you to notice that my my factors right here matched exactly from my chart on this one. They match, right? These did not match. What do I mean by that? Well, this factor here is not just x plus 2 and x plus 15, but down here it worked, x plus 4, x plus 5. So the question becomes why? Why does it work here but not here? Well, here's the reason why. It's all about that leading coefficient. What's with your x squared term? Up here in the first one, it was a 3, right? In the second one, it's just a leading coefficient of 1. So what you need to catch is that if your leading coefficient is 1, then your table will match your binomials exactly if the leading coefficient is 1. Why do I tell you this? Because it's a shortcut. If the leading coefficient equals 1, then they will match. If the leading coefficient is not 1, they won't match, and this grouping thing is going to be really, really important. So here's your shortcut that I'm giving you. If you notice your trinomial, you take a 10-second stop, and you look, oh, it's just a 1, and I think through my chart, I can go straight to this right here. You don't have to show all this work if the leading coefficient is 1. 
If the leading coefficient is anything besides one, you're gonna have to do all this because I promise you need to look at the grouping. It's not gonna match the table. So take it from experience, okay? This pattern always works if that leading coefficient is one. So that can be a great helpful shortcut for you. Let's try some more of these and see if we catch it sooner. All right, let's try this out. Look at number three. So if I look at my trinomial, notice it has a leading coefficient of one. It's not written, we don't have to worry about that, but it is there. So what I need to do is stop and think about my, um, what I need to multiply and add to, right? So I'm gonna multiply to negative 15, but I'm gonna add to a two. So let's think about our factors. There's a five and a three that would get us to a two. We just need to make sure that it's gonna be a positive two. If it's negative when I multiply, that means one of them has to be negative and one has to be positive. Since the addition, the sum is positive, I want the smaller number to be the negative. So that means I can jump right to my answer. Since my coefficient's one, I can just jump to x minus three, x plus five, and I'm done. That's it, because this worked right here. And because my leading coefficient is one, Let's try the next one. Number four is a little tricky. Hopefully that lead negative is screaming at you and you see that and we're like, hold up, let's get that out of there. So I'm gonna factor it first. X squared plus three X minus 18. All right, now notice leading coefficient is now one. We're in good shape. Let's move on using our shortcut. But let's stop and think, what am I multiplying to? I'm multiplying to a negative 18 and I'm adding to a three. Hmm, think about our numbers. We have one and 18, two and nine, three and six, that could work, right? Let's get our symbol or our signs right. Obviously they're gonna have to be different signs if the product is negative, but if it's adding to a positive, that means the smaller one needs to be negative. So then I can um, bring that negative one down, hang it on for the ride. These will go directly to the binomials using my factor. So X minus three, x plus six, so all of this is my solution. Don't forget the negative one. Let's jump over to number five. All right, let's do GCF though. GCF is our best friend, right? Take a GCF first, because that can get us to a better place. So x squared minus 13x plus 12. Okay, now my leading coefficient is one right here. So I can now use my shortcut. <clears throat> um, let's do the multiply add chart. Let's see, what do I need to multiply? I'm gonna to multiply to, using this, I'm gonna to multiply to 12, and I need to add to negative 13. Well, hmm, 12 and one would work. If it's positive, the product is positive, it means they have to match in the sign. So that was, the only way to get it to negative 13 is to make both of these negative. So, okay. So now I'm gonna bring that two down, and now I can factor x minus 12, x minus one, and remember I can jump right to the step because the leading coefficient right here is one. We took that two out. What about number six here? You cannot take a two out of that leading coefficient. So what does that mean? Well, that means I'm gonna have to go through the grouping thing. But what can I do? I can factor out an x out of each term. So there is a GCF. So if I take an x out of each term, I will have two x squared plus 11x plus 12. All right, now I need to do my multiply and add chart. Oops, I didn't give myself room. Uh, see, I'm gonna multiply to, what, 24, and I need to add to 11. All right, this is different, but multiplying to 24, a lot of ways I can do that. Eight and three come to mind. Eight and three, if you add them, they do come to 11. But because my leading coefficient is a two, I cannot just say x plus three, x plus eight. I have to go through the grouping model. So bring that x down, then I have two x squared. I'm busting up the 11. I'm gonna make it eight x plus three x plus 12. Now I'm gonna pair these guys up. So x times, <clears throat> GCF of these two terms would be two x, And then I would have x plus four. GCF here, oh, bring that plus sign down, 
is a 3, and that gives me x plus 4. So now, oops, I forgot my other set of parentheses. Now I have x times x plus 4 times my leftovers would be 2x plus 3. And there it is. There's my factored trinomial. All right, so as we continue on, let's just keep looking at factoring. I have a squared term, I have a difference, and I have another squared term. This is a perfect square. So this one will factor into x plus 10, x minus 10. All right, I know it's going to straight factor like that. Coefficient's 1 right up here. It's easy to do. Now, number 8 looks a little different. Doesn't have a coefficient of 1, but we can do GCF. So always check for GCF, right? So if I factor out a 2, I will have x squared minus 25. Now look at it. Now this is a difference of squares. At x squared and 25 is a perfect square. And there's a minus. So I can continue factoring. I'm just going to bring the 2 straight down. And then I'll have x plus square root of 25 is 5 times x minus square root of 25 is 5. So there you go. It's completely factored. Number 9, again, check GCF. I can take an x out of both terms. That gives me x minus 8. And then it's completely factored. That's all I had to do on that. So when you're factoring, always start with GCF and then look at um, these tricks that I've shown you. Now, a couple more types of questions I want to go over with you. Look at this word problem. A square has an area of x squared plus 8x plus 16. Express one side in terms of x. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to factor this guy. And you know a square as well as I do. The sides are all equal, right? So what we factor out should be equal. So let's just play along and go with it. So I have x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now if I use um, my multiply and add question process, okay, if I multiply to 16, but I'm going to add to 8, hopefully you see that 4 and 4 work, all positive. So now I'll have x plus 4, x plus 4. That is it factored out. Now notice that these are the same because the side lengths are the same. So each, see how it says express one side in terms of x? Well, one side length is x plus 4. That's what we're saying. Remember, the preferred way to write this is x plus 4 squared. So since it's a square, I would imagine these two factors would be the same because the side lengths are the same. Let's try number 11. This one is a rectangle, so my side lengths are not going to be the same. My factors are not going to be the same, but my process is the same. All right, notice this one has a coefficient in the front of 5, so I can't just take it from my multiply add table. I'm going to have to do a little more grouping to make this one work. Let's work this out. So 5x squared minus 42x plus 16. All right, multiply 5 times 16 gives me 80, but I need to add to get negative 42. All right, so what comes to mind for negative, for 80? Well, 8 and 10, 2 and 40, 40 and 2, right? 2 and 40, 42, same thing, right? Can I combine them in such a way that when I multiply, they're positive, but when I add, they're negative? Well, what if they're both negative? Wouldn't that work? Because two negatives make a positive when you multiply. So. This is the one I'm going to go with, negative 2 and negative 40. So I'm breaking this one up. 5x squared minus 2x minus 40x plus 16. All right, I'm going to group these two and do GCF of these two. This would just be an x, and I'll have 5x minus 2. I'm going to bring this minus sign straight down. And what do I have in common here? Well, I can take and make sure you do GCF here. I can take an 8 out of both of those, right? Not just 4. I can take 8 out. So if I take a negative 8, so negative 40 divided by negative 8 is 5x, and 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2. All right, notice my factors are the same. So my GCF is the 5x minus 2, and my leftovers is going to be... Notice my leftovers, here they are, x minus 8. So if I group those, I will have x minus 8. There it is. Now, 
Does it make sense that this could be a rectangle? Sure. So what's happening here? I would label this, I would say the length would be 5x minus 2 and the width would be x minus 8. Now, does it matter which one's length or width? Not at all. But since we're talking about a rectangle and it says length and width, then you would write them like this. Notice we say this is called in terms of x. All right, so hopefully this gives you some application of how we factor and how it could be used. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.